Bakht Khan 1797 to 13 May 1859 was commander in chief of Indian rebel forces in the Indian rebellion of 1857 against the East India Company. Topic: <laughs> Life story. Bakht Khan was a Pashtun related to the family of Rohila chief Najib ul Dalla, from a branch of the Berch tribe. He was born in Bainor in Rohilkhand and later became a subadar in the army of the East India Company, gaining 40 years of experience in the Bengal Horse Artillery and seeing action in the First Anglo-Afghan War. He died in 1859 in Bunner, Pakistan. The Rebellion Indian Rebellion of 1857 started when a group of sepoys rebelled against the introduction of rifle cartridges that were allegedly greased with lard pig's fat. This offended the Muslim soldiers because they are not allowed to eat pig's meat in Islam as well as it offended the vegetarian Hindu soldiers. The uprising spread rapidly in the surrounding areas of Delhi against the British. When Bakht Khan heard of the rebellion in Meerut, he decided to march to Delhi to support the Mughal Emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar's army. By the time Bakht Khan arrived at Delhi on 1 July 1857, with a large number of Rohila sepoys, the city had already been taken by rebel forces and the Mughal ruler Bahadur Shah Zafar had been proclaimed Emperor of India. The Emperor's eldest son, Mirza Mughal, also called Mirza Zahiruddin, had been given the title of Chief General, but this prince had no military experience. This was the time when Bakht Khan along with his forces arrived in Delhi on Wednesday 1 July 1857. With his arrival, the leadership position did improve. Bakht Khan's superior abilities quickly became evident, and the emperor gave him actual authority and the title of Sahib e Alam Bahadur, or Lord Governor General. Khan was virtual commander of the Sepoy forces. Although Mirza Zahiruddin was still the commander in chief, Bakht Khan faced many problems which needed his immediate attention. The first and foremost problem was financial, to solve it, he obtained from the emperor authority to collect taxes. The second problem was the logistical one of supplies, which became more and more acute with the passage of time and even more so when British forces assaulted the city in September 1857. The British had many spies and agents in the city and were constantly pressurizing Bahadur Shah to surrender. The situation around Delhi proceeded to deteriorate rapidly. Bakht Khan's leadership could not compensate for the rebels' lack of organization, supplies and military strength. Delhi was besieged on 8 June 1857. On 14 September, the British assaulted the Kashmiri Gate and Bahadur Shah fled to Humayun's tomb before surrendering to the British against Bakht Khan's pleas, on 20 September 1857. The emperor was arrested and the Mughal princes who were implicated in the massacre of British civilians, were executed. Bakht Khan himself left Delhi and joined rebel forces in Lucknow and Shahjananpur. Later, Bahadur Shah Zafar was tried on the charges of treason and exiled to Rangoon, Burma where he died in 1862. Burial On 13 May 1859, he was mortally wounded and died. He was buried in the graveyard of Nanzar, then part of Swat, now in district Bunner, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province of Pakistan. One expert in the matters of SWAT history claims that he came to SWAT after the war was lost and spent the rest of his life under the protection of Akhand of SWAT. <laughs> <laughs> 